Islam, besides catering to the spiritual aspects, it caters to how a man should lead a life. All the religions, they tell that robbing is bad, raping is bad, molesting a woman is bad. Islam says that, Judaism says that, Christianity says that. So what's the difference? Islam, besides telling that all these acts are bad, it shows a state where all these acts will not be. For example, let's take robbing. Islam has prescribed zakat. Every rich man who has a saving of more than the nisab level, of more than 85 grams of gold, he should give 2.5% of saving every lunar year in charity. If every rich man gives charity, poverty will eradicate from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. And after that, if any man robs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 38, As for the thief, whether it be male or female, chop of the hands as a punishment from the Lord for their crime. Therefore, Saudi Arabia, it has the least crime in the world. Some people might say that if you go in Saudi Arabia, every second person's hand, you would find it chopped off. But the punishment, it is so strict that a person, he would think a 10 times before robbing before doing the crime. And someone might say, chopping off the hands in this 21st century, Islam is a barbaric religion. Islam is a ruthless religion. You know, America happening to be one of the most advanced countries of the world, according to the FBI, it has the highest rate of crime and theft. I'm asking the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, that every man he should give zakat. And after that, if any man robs, chopping on the hands, will the rate of crime in America, will it decrease? Will it remain the same or will it increase? But naturally it will decrease. You implement the Sharia and you get results. Therefore, the least rate of crime and theft in any country in the world, it's in Saudi Arabia. You implement the Sharia and you get results. Let me give you one more example. Let's take the example of rape. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30. Kullil mu'minin yaqubu min absari wa yafuzu furujahum. Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whenever any man looks at any woman, if any brazing thought, if any unashamed thought comes to his mind, he should lower his gaze. Next verse Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty, and display not her beauty except what is ordinary of, and tell her to draw her veil over her bosoms, and display not her beauty except in front of their husbands, their fathers, their sons. And there's a big list of mehrams, of close relatives who she cannot marry. There are basically six criteria for hijab that I mentioned the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith. The first is the extent for the man and for the woman. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. And for the woman, it is a complete body should be covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria are the same for the man and for the woman. Second, the clothes they wear, it should be loose. It should not be tight fitting. It should not reveal the figure. Third, it should not be translucent or transparent. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not be that of the opposite sex. And sixth, that it should not resemble that of the unbelievers. These are basically six criteria for hijab that I mentioned the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 59. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, 
كل أزواجك وبناتك ونساء المؤمنين. O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad to put on their cloak, so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. I would like to give you an example. If there are twin sisters who are equally beautiful and they are walking down the streets of Colombo, and one is dressed in the hijab, that is the complete body is covered, the only parts that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. And the other one is dressed in the mini skirts or shorts. And if there's a hooligan who's waiting for a catch, who's waiting to tease a girl, I'm asking the question that which girl will he tease? But natural, the girl in the mini skirts or shorts, you invite so you'll receive. Islam has prescribed hijab for the woman. And after that, if any man rapes any woman, capital penalty, death penalty. Someone might say death penalty in this 21st century. Islam is a barbaric religion. Islam is a ruthless religion. You know, America, happening to be one of the most advanced countries of the world, it has the highest rate of rape. According to the FBI report, in the year 1990 alone, 1756 rapes took place. 1996, according to US Department of Justice, 2,713 women were raped. 1990, 1756. 1996, 2,713. Maybe the Americans, they got bolder in the span of six years. I'm asking the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, that Every woman, her complete body should be covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. And after that, if any man rapes any woman, capital penalty, death penalty, I'm asking the question, will the rate of rape in America, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? But naturally it will decrease. You implement the Sharia and you get results. Therefore, the least rate of rape in any country in the world, it's in Saudi Arabia. You implement the Sharia and you get results. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 24. Wa khalafiha And there is not a nation to whom we have not sent a one or a kind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Raad, Chapter number 13, verse number 7. Well, you could come and had, and to each nation we have sent a guide. By name, 25 prophets are mentioned in the glorious Quran. For example, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. By name, 25 prophets are mentioned in the glorious Quran. But all the messengers before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only sent for their people. But Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he sent for the whole of humanity. It is mentioned through Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse 107. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةُ الْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent thee not, but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Raad, chapter number 13, verse number 38. لِكُلِّ أَجَلٍ كِتَابٍ and to each period, we have sent a book. By name, four revelations that are mentioned in the glorious Quran. The Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, and the Quran. The Torah was the Wahi, the revelation that was revealed to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. The Zabur was the Wahi, the revelation that was revealed to Prophet David, peace be upon him. The Injil was the Wahi, the revelation that was revealed to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And the Quran is the last and final revelation that was revealed to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is mentioned several places that this is the last revelation. In Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1. In Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185. And in Surah Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 41. The glorious Quran, it is not meant only for the Muslims, only for the Arabs. But it is meant for the whole of humanity. Wherever you are, 
you have to follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the last and final revelation, that is the glorious Quran. Whether it be in Sri Lanka, whether it be in America, whether it be in India, you have to follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the last and final revelation, that is the glorious Quran. I would like to end my talk with a quotation from the glorious Quran from Surah Nahl, chapter number 16, verse number 125. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preachings and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. No God, no peace. No God, no peace. N O no God, N O no peace. K N O W no God, K N O W no peace. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.